The choice between a PC-based digital audio workstation and a Mac-based one is entirely personal. It is up to you to choose the operating system you feel most comfortable at. Both have their advantages and disadvantages. I will say though, the desktop towers are generally faster than laptops and cheaper. The first thing you will need to think of is whether your system can cope with the latest audio editing software. If your system can handle the two industry giants Pro Tools 7 and Logic 8, then you're safe to use any software of your choice. Here we have an example of the minimum system requirements for Pro Tools 7. To run this software, DigiDesign advises you to have at least 768 megs of RAM. And this is where I like to come in. Always get more than the minimum required. The minimum required is a system that has what it needs to install the software, but it will most probably crash at use. You will be able to install it, but using it will be a different story, so always get more than the minimum required. And always check the software compatibility with the system before buying. Next, you'll need to think how you're going to record audio into your machine, and that's the audio interface or sound card's job. The main purpose of an audio interface is to get sound into your computer and sound out of your computer. My first advice to you is to get a dedicated audio interface or sound card. If you want to do sound editing, you will need a dedicated outboard audio interface. Dedicated means that the sound card or audio interface is not built in the motherboard and therefore it's not using the motherboard's resources. It will have dedicated RAM for audio processing. If you own a PC with one of those simple sound cards with one stereo input and stereo output RCA connectors, you will need a mixer to record audio into. Here's how you do it. So uh, this is a small 16 input mixer and let's say uh, I'd like to record some nice acoustic guitars. Let's say you're using a stereo pair technique which I will be discussing on the microphone techniques chapter and uh, you'd adjust the microphone gains here and the signal would flow through the channels and you'd adjust the levels there and uh, obviously you'd pan them left and right and send the signal to the main mix which are the master faders. You would also want to record two overheads uh, to capture the room ambience and uh, same thing this time, you would adjust the gain of the microphones here, the signal would flow through the channel and uh, you wouldn't pan them as wide as the stereo pair and uh, you'd adjust the levels there and uh, send the signal to the main mix. Uh, let's say you'd like to DI the guitar, so uh, you'd plug it in here and the signal will flow through the channel. This time you wouldn't pan it because it's a mono channel. You'd adjust the level and send it to the main mix. Now this main mix signal is going to come out through the RCA tape outputs and that's what you're going to send to your computer. So you've done your mix, send it to the main and from the main through the tape outputs you are going to send it to your computer. To listen back to what you're recording, you'd plug the output of your computer here on the tape inputs of your mixer. Right, now, uh, you can also control the listening level through this knob here, which is the control room knob. To listen back to what you're recording, to listen back uh, the signal from your main mix to your computer, you will need to enable the tape inputs on your mixer. Plug in your headphones adjust the levels on the control room knob and you're set to go. If you're a Mac user, you're going to have to get a USB audio interface, like the one I have here. Although for PC users, I'd recommend them to get one of these as well, only because it's a lot easier and you get a lot more options. This particular audio interface is called the Mbox 2, but the same principles I'm explaining here should apply to any other audio interface. This one has two mic preamps. Mic preamps are very important. Now I'm not going to go into much detail, but just so you know, mic preamps turn the low energy level from your microphone into what it's called line level, which is run through the mixer. If you're okay with two mic preamps, this is how you should connect your audio interface. Take a USB cable and run it directly into your computer and not through any kind of hub. Then plug in a microphone so you can sing also plug in a DI so you can uh, record your guitars 
you'd adjust the gains at the two inputs on the front. Yeah. Then, to connect your speakers to your audio interface, do it through the monitor's output. And that, you should adjust the level in the front where it says monitor's output level. That's it. If you're into more advanced recording, you would have to use a mixer with this audio interface. I'll show you right away. In this situation, we're going to record four microphones and one DI uh, running through the mixer into your audio interface. Now, you need to consider your audio interface as a stereo tape recorder with uh, one left channel and one right channel. Now, after mixing the levels from all your inputs, we are going to send them to the main mix and from here to the main output left and right into your audio interface. So, you take the left and right mains from your mixer and connect them to input number one for left, line level, and input number two for right, line level as well. Always plug in your headphones when you're recording to avoid spillage from your speakers into your microphones. After you record it, you need to listen back to the sound so you can edit it, so we're gonna connect the outputs from your audio interface into your mixer and from your mixer to your speakers. Connect the monitor's outputs left and right of your audio interface into two mono channels on your mixer. Pen the first channel to left and pen the second channel to right. Send it to the main mix and connect the outputs, monitor outputs of your mixer to your speakers. Okay, another thing you can do is a bit of signal path management. To avoid the signal to run through all the channel strips EQs which may color the sound, you can connect them to the auxiliary returns and that signal goes directly into the monitor's outputs into your speakers. So connect the left monitor output from your audio interface to the auxiliary return left and the right to auxiliary return right and that goes directly into the mains outs. The signal path no longer runs through all the channels and goes directly into the speakers.